practice match with Nick Kyrgios ahead of next week's Australian Open. The Serb was deported before last year's tournament over a row about his COVID-19 vaccination status, an issue that divided public opinion. Sticking with the Australian theme, Australian teenager Garang Kuhl may make his debut for Hearts tonight after moving on loan from Newcastle until the end of the season. St Mirren visit Tynecastle with that match live on BBC Radio Scotland. And the semi-final lineup will be completed at the Masters Snooker today. Barry Hawkins v Judd Trump is first up at one o'clock before Sean Murphy takes on Stuart Bingham later. And that's all your sport for now. Thank you very much, uh, Martin. You're listening to Lunchtime Live with uh, Andrew and Hayley. Lots coming up in the next few minutes. We're going to be talking about the latest COVID-19 uh, figures. Infections have not gone down in Scotland, although there has been a decrease uh, across the UK. Uh, and uh, we're also going to be talking more, a bit more about free ports um, as well. But now the time is half past 12. On digital radio. FM. Your smart speaker. And online. BBC Radio Scotland. It's time for news and sport for the borders with David Knox. Good afternoon. Scottish Borders Council's waste management is facing a race against time to get staff members through their HGV tests to make sure bins continue to be emptied. Alistair Russell has the details. Although the local authority is close to having a full complement of bin lorry drivers, managers have revealed that they're relying on foremen and supervisors most weeks to deputise as drivers. Manager Ross Sharp Dent told members of the authority's scrutiny committee that it is a struggle every week to provide enough drivers for all recycling, food waste and general waste. Routes. He explained that the number of loader drivers with HGV licences who could act as backup had dropped from 20 to just two or three in recent years, and that a recent job advert for six HGV drivers had failed to lead to a single post being filled. Mr Sharp Dent said that work was underway for current non-driving staff to sit HGV tests and help provide backup. He added that a new page on the council website had gone live, which provides details of any missed bin routes. A hoik man who assaulted his partner for a night out has been jailed for six months at Selkirk Sheriff Court. 37-year-old Daniel Keane pleaded guilty to assaulting Samantha Smith to her injury on April the 21st. The court heard that they returned home and consumed more alcohol when an argument developed and Keane assaulted the woman. Sheriff Peter Patterson, after considering background reports, said Keane had shown no sympathy and there was no alternative to custody. He was also made the subject of a non-harassment order for the next two years. A Gal Shields man has made a private court appearance this morning accused of abusive behaviour to a partner or ex-partner. 47-year-old Colin Bell made no plea and the case was con- continued for further examination. He was released on bail from Selkirk Sheriff Court. Well, next week starts with Blue Monday, the most depressing day of the year, according to psychologists. While the darker winter months do lead to an increase in calls to the Samaritans, volunteer call handlers at the Borders branch of the charity in Selkirk hold Brew Monday on the same day. They use the events at the Waterwheel Cafe in Selkirk as an opportunity to promote the service and also allow potential volunteers to find out more. Julie Harvey has been a volunteer at the Selkirk branch for the past two years, and she's now one of the trainers. You think you can come out into the Samaritans and just pick up a call and take a call. And it's not like that at all. You have to totally change your way of thinking. You have to relearn how to listen, how to listen, how to speak to somebody. You're ju- non-judgmental. We try and put ourselves with that caller and walk with them through that call. We listen to them with empathy and we let them try and come to their conclusions in the way that they feel they would like to go forward. We don't offer advice at all. Well, Samaritan's Brew Monday takes place at the Waterwheel Cafe between 11 and 4 on Monday. With high levels of flu and COVID-19 circulating in both the community and local hospitals, health chiefs are urging everyone to get vaccinated. There's a drop-in clinic this weekend at the Volunteer Hall in Gallus Shields for everyone aged over 50, as well as those over the age of 12 considered at high risk. In addition to COVID boosters, the clinics will also offer flu jags. The Volunteer Hall will be open on Saturday and Sunday between 9.30 and 1, and then again from 1.45 to 5.45. 
Well, sport now is looking ahead to a busy weekend in rugby. It's a top of the table clash in the Premiership as Hoyk entertain Curry at Mansfield Park. Selkirk will take a giant step to courts towards securing a playoff spot if they can beat Mar at Philip Hawk. And Jed Forrest should be safe if they pick up the points against GHA at Riverside Park. In National League Division 1, it's top against bottom as Kelso welcomes Stuart's Melville to Pointer Park. Gala will be hoping their return to form continues as they head to GHK and Melrose haven't given up on the title just yet as they travel to Aberdeen. Melrose scrum half is Douglas Crawford. Obviously we were a bit disappointed after the result on Saturday against Ayr. Initial thoughts is that, that that's a league sort of lost and, and our side for running. But then you, you look bored and you think there's still nine games left. You know, leagues aren't won in January and there's still plenty of rugby to play and you know, National One's proven it's such a competitive league with the season going down right to the wire last year that anything could happen. Well, in Division 2, people's host Preston Lodge and Berwick travel to Falkirk. In football, Galaferini Rovers head to the Excelsior Stadium to face Celtic B in the Lowland League. Berwick Rangers have home advantage against Hearts B at Shieldfield. In the East Premier Division, Vale Leithen welcomed on Donald Bluebell to Victoria Park. Coldstream head to Burns Island Shipyard in the First Division, while people's Rovers face Edinburgh University. Tweedmouth Rangers are away to Arniston Rangers and Hoyk Royal Albert are at home to Edinburgh South. Busy weekend of sport. Now with the details of what the weather has in store. Here's Gillian Smart. This afternoon will bring bright and sunny spells with winds easing and just a few showers, although cloud will thicken from the west towards evening, bringing the risk of a further few showers. Highs today 5 to 8 Celsius. Tonight will bring further outbreaks of rain which will become persistent and heavy towards morning. Lows of 1 to 4 Celsius with winds picking up again. Tomorrow will start wet. The rain will clear to showers, wintry on the high ground, blustery and chilly. BBC Radio Scotland weather for the borders. That doesn't sound too bad. I'll be back with more news and sport for the borders this afternoon at half past four. Get the latest news on your smart speaker whenever you want. Just say, play BBC News for Scotland. You're listening to Lunchtime Live with Hayley Miller and Andrew Black. The time has just gone 25 to 1. And total COVID-19 infections have not gone down in Scotland, although there has been a decrease across the UK. According to the Office for National Statistics, an estimated 219,600 people in private households north of the border were likely to have had the virus at the start of this month. And that works out to around 1 in 25 people. Well, let's speak to the public health expert, Julian Evans, who's head of health and intelligence at NHS Grampian. Good afternoon, Julian. Good afternoon. Uh, what do you make of the, the latest figures then? I guess I was hoping for a bit of a, a bit of a reduction, the same as we're seeing in other parts of the UK, but it, I'm hoping that it won't be too far in coming. So we've seen another small increase uh, in infection levels uh, across our communities in Scotland. Uh, but what we are seeing is, is changes in what's happening in hospital. Uh, so uh, the rate of increased admissions because of COVID uh, and people with COVID in 